Hello and welcome to In the Art Scene podcast, an art podcast that has it all. I'm your host, Galina Marquez, and I invite fascinating people to talk about their personal creative journeys, success stories, and inspiration. We talk about art business and marketing, how to find your creative voice, and all the new trends in the art world, like NFT, AI, and such. Join me and my guest for today's conversation. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to In the Art Scene podcast. This is take two <laughs> of the interview with amazing uh, textile artist, Brie Angela. Hi, Brie. And uh, well, right right off the bat, uh, let's just talk about who you are, where you are, and uh, what kind of work you are doing, because what you're doing, uh, I mean, I can even see, in the, you guys can't see it, but I can see uh, amazing, humongous fabric flowers <laughs> hanging on her background. It's just something mind blowing. And that's I, 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 that's the little tiny piece of the scale that Brie is working in. So, mm-hmm. yeah, let's just let's just jump <clears throat> right into it and please introduce yourself. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Brie Angela, and I'm out here in Denver. I'm a New York native, but moved out here about like 12 or 13 years ago. And I've always been a creative artist, but I found my way into textiles. And ever since, I've just been like exploring ways to create opportunities for touch, tactile learning experiences, and just like allowing a space for especially kids to play and I like call myself a designer of play because um everything that I do is like for people to interact with and to really like explore spaces and especially textures I love textures always have um and so now I'm creating these imaginative like giant scale play spaces and right now I'm um nearing the end of a project where we're creating like an entire space dedicated to a garden so yeah. i'm making these gigantic you know uh textile uh flower sculptures and you know mushrooms that are bigger than me and you know all for little infants and toddlers to go play into Amazing. so yeah so it's a lot of fun i'm i'm moving away from more like um I guess you say like historically themed kind of uh, spaces and moving more into imaginative kind of spaces. So it is, it is amazing. I I, I want to ask you more about that and about the historically themed and imaginative mm-hmm. and whatever. Uh, but the, the whole idea of like, I, I know that you're making big installations in the museums and then mm-hmm. um to me and to many other people, uh, the you know the installation in the museum is something that is you know um, has a barrier like a rope, please don't touch signs and and that kind of stuff. The idea that you are making it uh, for specifically for the opposite purpose to be interacted mm-hmm. with and touched and played with it, it's it's so uh, new and so interesting, and I think that this is. Uh, this is something that we are missing the this interaction with um with art not just being an observer but but being an active participant uh so i i, I really want to ask you about all of that but before mm-hmm. we get to that i i, I want to ask you about your journey uh mm-hmm. because you said that you have been always creative and then you found yourself in uh, textiles so uh, i want to hear about the journey <laughs> how did that happen so- <clears throat> um ever since I was young I've always painted and I know how to draw I've just had this natural talent at it um maybe it's because I come from a line of artists um maybe it's genetic I don't know but um I, I sure hope so was, because I have a little one <laughs> <laughs> yeah so like I was just basically the next in line to be creative but I can tell you the rest of my uh, other parts of my family it's not that way so I don't know what how it happens, but I have the creative gene. And so I've always loved painting and drawing. I was really great at it to the point where I got scholarships to go to school. I went to Pratt Institute and I got great grades and <clears throat> had professors that like would love my work. And so I just thought I would be this illustrator. 
You know, I thought that was the goal. That's what I was going to do. And suddenly, you know, there was a lot of life changes happening um, where I just found like I needed to change what I was doing. You know, like when you have a big like traumatic event, like my parents passed away and I just felt like I needed to switch it up and change the materials that I was working with. And I've always loved fabrics. And I didn't really think of myself as like a fashion designer. That wasn't what I wanted to do. But I always loved working with children. That was like my other thing I always did. Like I kind of have led this path um, of like two different parallel existences at once. I've always worked with children and I've always been an artist. So like it was like something that organically happened. I started playing around with textiles and then I met someone that asked me to make a pillows for a children's space. And then the next thing you know, I was making costumes and puppets and it kind of just like turned into this thing where people started to come to me, especially museums to introduce you know, introduce the softness, this interactive component to like, how can I get the children more um, engaged, you know? And so it just like naturally flowed. And here I am as a textile artist. (laughs) And now I'm like, (laughs) here I am. And I love what I'm doing, but I don't even know if that's what it is that I am. You know, it's just like, I just love exploring materials and getting kids and families to kind of interact with each other. And now I'm trying to bring it to the next level. Like, how do I make it more purposeful? How do I make it have more meaning? Um, How do I make these open-ended play spaces where kids can feel empowered and where families can learn from each other? You know, like I'm trying to make a space that I don't know if it exists yet. So I'm not sure what it is that I'm trying to achieve, but right now I'm doing it through textiles and touch because I think that's incredibly important, like the touch part about it, Um, because without it, we lose connection to each other, you know? Mm -hmm. So if I can be the one person, you know, to like incorporate it into these more like, you know, like you said, these spaces where you're not allowed to touch, like. I'm I'm excited about that and I want to keep exploring it and keep you know uh, I don't know just pushing textiles to a place that you know it's new and and exciting so so I have I have so many questions just from uh what you just said so first of all I I uh wanted to ask you how uh how does it um uh, how does it translate with your grief the the idea that you needed to switch the medium after your parents passing? Because I am, I'm, and I'm, you're you're totally free to say that this is you know too personal and you don't want to discuss it. But I am, you know, a, a, being a, a psychology geek uh, and especially exploring creatives' minds, I, I'm really curious always to hear about this connection between the ideas the mediums uh and and how it it relates to what you were feeling or what you were going through in the moment Mm -hmm. well I guess for me when I paint um it's incredibly spiritual I kind of just it I don't know how it works but I paint and it comes out and it might I don't know if it's my subconscious or it's spiritually connected and it just comes out. But um, those paintings that I have always done were either gifts uh, just to like share my energy with someone uh, for healing, or it was just my way of like expressing my inner emotions out. And it was just getting really dark. And, um, And I don't know if it scared me or if it was just like me needing to get it out. It was just, I felt like, by using different materials, it was like accessing a different part of my brain. You know what I mean? Like it was like, I no longer needed to, um, I guess, dwell in that emotion. I could 
move past it and just start manipulating in a different way if that makes any sense it's just like i almost like had to have like an identity shift i just had to change my way of doing things in order to feel different if that makes any mm-hmm. sense yeah um, yeah totally does and and it did it helped me a lot it, it's interesting like i even I don't even like identify with my last name. I just went with my middle name, Brie Angela, because it just, it was like my way of just like, I guess maybe disconnecting from my roots, right? Or from like my family system of like needing the mom and dad. It was like, okay, this is me now. This is like, I, you know, I'm going to do something totally different because I'm going to fly off on my own. You know what I mean? Like it was... Mm -hmm. It was definitely a huge shift and it um, allowed me to feel free to express myself differently, you know, and more like softly and more in a joyful way. I also Mm -hmm. noticed colors change significantly. Like everything I did was just like, I was trying to find the joy of life, I guess, and just like helping children I guess you know like when you're really hurt and sad the best thing you can do is try to help other people right and so I think I I was doing was trying to and what I continue to do is like heal my own inner child by like helping children or like finding ways to bring joy to children's lives by designing things for them to play in and spaces for them to feel safe in because um a lot of that was attached to my own parents of just like, you know, there was an identity that came with that where, you know, it was just like, it was a hard, you know, I had a kind of a rough childhood, slightly dysfunctional. (laughs) And and so, um, I don't know. I just, I feel like um, now as I've, moved into this more soft way of looking at the world it's my way of like helping children and and using brighter colors using soft spaces having these textures and touches and connections and it's just like a it's a lot lighter than where I was going with my art Mm -hmm. and I hope one day that I can like take this and like translate it back into my art like my paintings Mm -hmm. Um, because I because I do have goals for children's books I've always wanted to be a children's Uh, book illustrator and so now I'm trying to figure out how do I incorporate the two like how do I bring my textiles into a children's book oh that sounds so interesting wow so it's because I'm not sure I'm there yet with painting I know that sounds strange but maybe artists can understand that it's like when I go to paint the anger comes out or the the sadness or whatever Mm -hmm. it is there's this energy that comes out that's a lot darker than when I use my textiles it's like two different almost like two different people or you know I touch I tap into something different when I use different materials I totally get it totally get it Mm mm-hmm so. Wow. Well, you also mentioned that you have been working with children all along. Mm-hmm. So, um, mm-hmm. how, when have you been a teacher? Uh, can you talk a little bit more about this? Sure. So, when I was in college in Brooklyn, um, I did a work study program, and I just so happened to be placed with America Reads, and I went into um, a early childhood center that was in the middle of Bedford Stuyvesant, like in like in the middle of the worst part of this of Brooklyn and I witnessed like these beautiful children being born into something they didn't choose and it was so it was a life-changing experience for me and it made me notice the light I brought into the space and how creativity could like empower and change a child and just like pull out potentials and 
it was just a beautiful thing to see. And ever since that moment, I always, while I pursued my art career, continued to work with children. Um, A lot of it was in early childhood centers, but it was after that I um, did more nonprofit work. And so I would always work with kids from anywhere from six to um, 18, Mm -hmm. um, working in just bringing a lot of it was me bringing textiles to them and just trying to do more experimental, hands-on, open-ended kind of play, really. Um, And more recently, I've worked uh, with kids in the inner city environments uh, where I am there. Uh, they're like my interns like Mm -hmm. internships for like creative job training Mm -hmm. and so um that's been a lot of fun and I'll bring um like with the uh learning how to do dye learning how to you know manipulate uh fabrics and just like sewing skills and how do we you know I'm always trying to get them to see how to make money you know Mm -hmm. with their art and Mm -hmm. how it's possible so it's always I mean I've had this huge journey of working with with children of all ages and it's very like it grounds me it keeps me sane because the art industry can be a lot of ego and it can be a lot of um individual work you know like look at me it's you know where I have a lot of like community based um goals I guess Mm -hmm. I I enjoy um working with the communities and just you know having things everything that I do I'm like how can I get kids involved in this how can I you know, get them to participate and see that they have value and that they have like these incredible ideas. And honestly, it like inspires me to make more things like, so like the children are my muse, they're my inspiration. And so every time I'm like too focused in on being an artist, I kind of have to make sure that I go in do a little volunteer work or have a little internship program going or just like get involved again. Like it, it, it definitely um, keeps me focused on the goal, I guess, like what I'm, what it is that I'm actually trying to do. And that's like make the world a better place with the future and our future as our kids. So like, yeah, if, if I can help in any way, then I have to make sure that I'm working with the kids. That's that's actually amazing. I I have a a very special <laughs> soft spot for um for creatives and organizations who are working with children specifically and I have interviewed a number of people who are doing different programs uh helping kids to uh, tap into their creativity and acquire some skills. And it's actually amazing what you said that you are not only helping them to uh, be creatives and become artists, but also show them that these are actual real life skills and then they, they can apply it into something that can make them a living, uh, especially in the inner cities. I, I think this is, this is amazing. And this is, um, this is important. It's important it to. Is to uh to raise the new generation of people who are not afraid of expressing themselves creatively but also uh not struggling you know like a lot of hungry artists around the world right so yeah that's yeah. amazing what you do absolutely and being honest with them yes that's one thing i always like i will have i'll be in the room with several other teachers or directors and they'll kind of give me like a little side eye (laughs) but I'm just like no I'm going to be honest I'm going to let them know how hard it is I'm going to let them know rejection comes with the territory and and all of these things or like you know for example like you're really shy and you don't like to talk about your work well guess what you're not going to make it you know like you better get it together because that's not going to work And maybe that's not who you are and that's okay. But like, you need to know in the art industry, 
you're going to have to talk to a lot of people and you're going to have to network and, you know, you're, it's hard and it's not easy. And I just, I love like just getting kids to like understand that. And, Mm -hmm. and, and even just the ideas of like letting go of all the rules, all of these rules that we've been told that like, this is how you do something. These kids are brilliant. And like, look look at all these like youtube millionaires bajillionaires coming out and they're like in their teens Mm -hmm. they have great ideas and like i really i'm the person out there advocating to drop the rules you don't necessarily need to go to college to be an artist you know Mm -hmm. there's so many different avenues to get to show you like to make a living out of being a creative and like there's a lot of people still in the system education even if it's nonprofit education whatever it is that are pushing this more traditional way of of um making yourself a success Mm -hmm. and i just i just know that these kids know better you know they've seen it they're watching and witnessing our catastrophe you know, and they're learning a lot from it. And they're, and, and I think that they are going to need courageous leaders that are forward thinking and just like ready to break rules and ready to like re envision the future because, um, you know, all of this stress with like debt and, tests and you know what I mean whatever mm-hmm, mm-hmm. comes with like what it is to pursue art uh, in college is just like wow I don't know maybe you need college for like nursing and being a doctor but maybe not for art you know depending on where you're trying to go yeah but- oh there was yeah there was something interesting that you uh, said that they are witnessing our catastrophe <laughs> and <laughs> It kind of resonated with me because I mean this is this is so true. Uh, um, uh, in art education, uh, I mean there's there's a lot of interesting uh, things that uh, kids learn when they go to art school. But uh, pretty much pretty much all artists I, I've been talking to so far say that uh, there is no. Uh, good way they teach in the school on how to you know go in the real world and and you know make a living out of being an artist right so and and yet uh, we are pushing this traditional quote-unquote traditional way of being successful right although we know that it's not working anymore and then what Mm -hmm. percentage of artists are actually being financially successful and how they get there sometimes it's luck sometimes it's uh, it, 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 uh, they are being a naturally entrepreneurial or or mm-hmm. something like that, which is not not every artist uh, has, right? right. So right. sometimes the traditional ways of running the business are not going to apply for artists just because it's not in their nature, uh, mm-hmm. and even that is not being taught in school. So uh, and and yet yes, we've we've been pushing and pushing for this traditional way, and I like that you are saying that. No, we shouldn't be teaching those kids this traditional ways because they have already witnessed that it's not working. They they know better. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So it's time to like, okay, what are your ideas, kids? Yes. You know what I mean? Like, let's listen to them a little and let's see what they have to offer because I don't know. I just think that um we're entering a new era that's going to look so different than what we've ever known. And like, how dare we think that we know how to prepare these kids for that? Do you know what I mean? So it's like, I think it's, it's, it's very important for them to have active, to be active participants in their future. And, and yeah, I don't know. I'm here to just like be honest with them. And I, and I, and I definitely enjoy when they get it you know and then the, and then you see them come back and they're so successful and they've created you know this great entrepreneurial kind of like adventure and I'm just like so proud of some of the, you know a lot of the kids that I see do these things and I just hope that I was like just a little bit of a voice to like tell them like there's so many ways to get there mm-hmm. 
just one way. You don't just need a degree because like you said, like I went to a really great school and I can tell you that um, I learned everything I needed to know through experience, not from the art school, you know? And thankfully like Pratt at least um, was very business oriented. So we did have a lot more business business than like say people that I know to like diversity or something for art where they were very experimental which is beautiful in its own way but like when you get out into um the art industry business is more important which sucks but you know yeah it is yeah <laughs> totally <laughs> you know totally. <laughs> Hey, In The Arts and listeners, I just wanted to say a quick thank you for all the support you've given me in the past year. It means more than you know. Every donation through Buy Me A Coffee and every purchase of swag helps me keep up with the production and put out a new episode every week. And I certainly appreciate if you will keep doing it. But I also feel that if you like the show this much, you deserve a little more than just a thank you. This is why I launched a Patreon page. There will be monthly live Q&As, exclusive content, and for the hardcore fans, I got some swag and keepsakes. I love this community that we are building together. And by joining my Patreon, you will help me create more content for you. Go to patreon.com slash in the art scene and join today. Speaking of the real world uh, success, networking, et cetera, et cetera. So you said that a little by little, you started with creating some uh, pillows and puppets for kids and then costumes and then, and then boom, museums started approaching you. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I'm sure it wasn't a boom and museums started approaching you. So I, I'm really curious to know how you started working with museums. What was the first project? Uh, did they find you? Did you pitch the idea of, uh, you know, the, um, the work that you do to the museum? So how how um, how does this happen in the real world? <laughs> so what I one thing I always tell some of my uh, students I work with is always wear what you make or have someone else wear it. You know, like to different networking functions, even going out, um, be your own billboard. You know what I mean? If especially if you're a creative that makes like wearable art, mm -hmm. you know, because that's how it happened for me. I um, made a Phoenix hoodie um, and I gave it to a friend for a gift and we went to a party and she was wearing it. And there was someone that was affiliated with uh, museums and saw it and loved it and wanted me to work on a project at the museum. and. Thankfully, that went well. <laughs> and then it turned into more and more. And then I oh. am someone that makes sure I put my my name on everything because, um, I don't know, I've, unfortunately, my experience in art, I've done a lot of commercial art and working for other designers. And it's, it's, a, it's kind of harsh to feel like, you know, everything that you do is kind of overlooked because you're the behind the scenes. Mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm. So I put my name on everything. And I've actually had uh, different museums, in particular, the Smithsonian, uh, contact me and say, you know, everywhere we go, nobody has their names on things. We don't know who's making these things. And we saw your work and we see, you know, saw your name and that's how we found you. And I'm like, oh, yes. you know, so goodness, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, goodness, I put my name on there. So like <laughs> definitely make sure your name, you know, is at least stamped somewhere, like, you know, sewn in somehow. Um, because it is hard as an artist in the museums in particular, because you you're there to make other artists shine, if you know what I mean. You're not really there for your own um glory. So that's something hard to handle too. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but I definitely, um, yeah, wear your own work, make sure your names are on things and, 
um, continue to network. I always say that, you know, just like sh- get out there, jump in places, jump out of your comfort zone and just like show up <laughs> to some kind of, you know, event where there's going to be a lot of people in the same kind of place that you want to work at. Like go to the places that you want to be in, you know, and then that's how you do it. Really. That's, that's how I <laughs> that's how I've tried. That's how I've made my way. <laughs> so what was, what was the first project for the museum and what museum was that? Um, it was for the Denver Art Museum and it was called Architecture. And uh-huh. so I had just moved to Denver. Like I was literally like as soon as I got to Denver, magic happened. Um, I think that was like a couple days in that I got this project and I was doing a project based on the architecture of Denver. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> <I> didn't <know. laughs> like You don't even know the city. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I had no idea what buildings are what. So honestly, looking back, it's hysterical to see the buildings I chose for like some of the pillows because they're really not, you know, they don't really like represent... <laughs> Denver on its own. So it's really but the, hey, they came out great. And so they loved what I did so much that they asked me to do a giant um, mural on the wall that would be um, digitally printed. And so next thing you know, I had not only the mural on the wall, but like pillars and then pillows. And it's like I suddenly had an entire space dedicated to children and I was just like this is a thing you know (laughs) just like it just wow cool and then the next thing you know you know they loved it asked me to merchandise things which I turned down which was a really bad idea don't do that kids (laughs) (laughs) oh man so funny choices things I've done but um I definitely love that like I got to it's almost like even in education like the role I got to see things from a perspective that helped me to learn how to design better you know it's like I got to do these little tiny um design projects you know and I saw how kids would play with them and I saw how you know it would draw attention to people. And so when I got asked to do another project, I would like build on that. Mm -hmm. How do I do more of that? How do I really engage them and, and help them to like be the, like, I really love the idea of like the museum guest, like becoming the, the designer of, of the thing. Like it's Mm -hmm. not, it's not already laid out for you. It's kind of like, almost like I love Reggio if you know what Reggio is like that philosophy of just like open-ended materials that can be constructed in whatever way there's no end goal it's like it allows the imagination to unfold and so I've really been like trying to explore that with all of the different you know tactile projects that I made And so as I go, it's just like the spaces get bigger, you know, and now I've been asked to uh, des- help uh, design the Maury Sendak exhibit coming. And I'm like, that's my Aww. hero, wow. you know, like, and I'm going to be making a rumpus room. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> like, wow. You know, this all came from like a hoodie, you know, I, you know, and next thing you know, like it just tumbled into this thing where now it's like, wow, I can make it even more purposeful. I can really try to incorporate some ideas of like why play is so important. You know, how can you like uh, change the environment in subtle ways to like enhance learning or to like, you know, change the level of understanding and just like get people to start exploring imagination itself, you know? I have a question about this. Um, So do you get to observe how people interact with your spaces to gather the information uh, for how to build on it for the next project? 
Yes. Well, I do that anyway, no matter what, no matter what, I always just like stop in the museum. It's so funny. My daughter thinks I'm famous. I'm like, oh my gosh. You're <laughs> but she's like, that's my mom. Like, yeah. Oh, but, that's uh, so awesome. <laughs> um, but there is, uh, so like on the educational teams within the museums, there are moments for like mock-ups and just like test you know um whatever it's called I don't know exactly what it's called but like the master teachers will have kids come in just to like test out what happens Mm -hmm. if it's if it's something that would be successful or not and then we continue on with the project but honestly right now I'm I'm going I am getting a master's, like I'm doing an accelerated program to be that person because uh-huh. I feel like that person is kind of missing in the things that I'm noticing. Like I love what I've been doing, but I've been realizing that maybe mm, it's a little more about the beauty of a space versus like innovative play mm-hmm. or innovative like ways of really tapping into like how like why play is important how do we get parents and children to connect to each other more while also learning about their surroundings and the world Mm -hmm. you know so it's like I'm fascinated by that kind of uh, space but no there is there's definitely um um what is it like a process in place for for testing Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's interesting in itself. I think this is a this is a fascinating process. Not and and it's it's more than just being an artist and creating whatever the heck you want, right? Mm-hmm. Because you have a purpose in mind, and you have to know and understand how people will interact with with your creations to know that this is the right direction where you're going and be able to pivot where where you need to pivot absolutely and I, and I have like um I don't know how to do it yet and I'm hoping that while I'm in training for this year um I just want to start to explore how to make these spaces I guess more I don't know how you even like separate it but <clears throat> geared towards children that have come through incredible amounts of trauma mm-hmm I want to know how to make spaces for them, you know, without singling them out, but like, mm-hmm. can you incorporate things within your designs that can help heal or help, I don't know, unlock potentials and, you know, instead of just spaces to crawl in yeah. and look pretty. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying, like, I just think that design for children could be a little more purposeful. Yeah. Uh, oh my God. I, I see the future episode of <laughs> us talking about how you achieved that <laughs> and how you incorporated your textiles in the, in the kids books too. Yeah. Because this is like, I, I like, I don't even know how to start thinking about how to marry two together. It's just. Right. Like, but I think that's the future, right? We have no yeah. idea. Yeah. But exactly. it's going to happen exactly so i'm here for it i don't know how it's gonna happen it's just it's like i just have this dream these dreams and i don't even know how to get there <laughs> but it's like it will happen it's gonna happen like i think we're gonna start to see things like these two worlds just meet that you didn't think could meet and they do yeah. you know so that's amazing you figure it out <laughs> Well, I have another uh, question before I forgot it. So you mentioned that Smithsonian um, reached out to you because they Mm -hmm. found your name on the work that they liked. So Mm -hmm. did you do a project for Smithsonian? I did for the National Museum of African-American History and Culture. And it was during the riots, which was like a trip. (laughs) So it was um, it was really an honor for sure. Um, especially during, you know, it was just like, wow, here I am actually working on, um, interactive art. That's just like representing the beauty and the like ultimate respect for African-Americans. And just like, I was doing that 
as the riots were happening. So it was like really an honor. But um, yeah, it was super, I was like, couldn't believe it. It was flown out there and I had to like, I just felt like I made it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I was outside just taking pictures of myself. Just like, wow, look at me. Can't believe I'm here. And it was really cool. I got to do several different projects for them. And um, unfortunately, with the timing, Mm -hmm. it may have been a wash, but it's fine. I can at least say that I did that, you know, just because the timing, everything shut down. Mm -hmm. Uh, They were like a target, Mm -hmm. you know, during that time. So it was just like, I'm not sure how much of my, the projects I created were actually saw the light of day or if they're like holding out for another time you know I'm I'm sure that there will be you know appropriate time and place and and the I mean I don't I don't I don't think that your work would you know be on the shelf forever and um I also know that you have uh quite um quite a rich uh cultural heritage yourself Mm -hmm, I do yeah I am a mixed breed and uh I'm trying to explore that some more. Like uh, even at the end of this program, I'm going to Italy and Mm -hmm. I'm like, I really like, I've always been fascinated by our ancestral roots because I have gifts and talents that I didn't, I don't understand where they come from. Like I naturally am gifted at textiles and like, I don't, I, I never was raised with it. I have no idea how the heck that happened. And then I did my family tree. I mean, I always knew I was um, Armenian and Turkish and Italian and English, but like I didn't realize how much of textiles came from my Turkish roots. Mm -hmm. And like when I get in my art, I just really can feel my history. And then um, on my mom's side, we were told that there's Cherokee. in us too. And the last project I just made, I look at it and I'm like, I feel my mm-hmm. Cherokee blood in that. I'm like, wow. Like it's so cool to just um I don't know, just like see your 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 lineage in your work oh, without amazing. ever having like been exposed to it. It's so deep within us, you know, especially like for me as a textile artist, I just like every time I work on textile piece, I feel women. I feel the history like I can tap immediately into like the, I guess, consciousness of women. You know, I just like as I'm weaving or braiding or beading or, you know, even just touching and sewing, it's just like centuries has you know have come through our you know our bloodlines and so i really love that and i i just love exploring different cultures too with what i do um you know it's changing you know but it doesn't mean that there's not technique you know Mm -hmm. technique is like you know i love learning different techniques from different cultures and, um, you know, of course, it's <clears throat> a sensitive time and like, you know, we don't want to like, I don't know. I, I think that this is the out of line. <laughs> I don't know. I think that this is actually, you know, this is um, something because we've been talking all, all along almost for an hour that uh, it is important that the the uh, sensation of touch is really important for connection uh, really? for learning for you know uh being being in, like literally in touch with something so i think that this is uh, an amazing way of learning different cultures from yeah. from your own lineage or maybe even not because uh, you know, you can learn all kinds of theoretical, um, uh, like theory and history and whatever. It's all knowledge, and it's gonna, you know, have a place somewhere in your brain. But until you start touching something and feeling what those people who were creating the cultural pieces were feeling when they were doing this, mm-hmm. uh, it's like that. This is when you really start to understand and learn and 
uh, getting in touch with someone else's history, someone else's culture, someone else's <clears throat> heritage. I think that this is an amazing way of creating, uh, you know, connections and maybe, you know, even more blurring the lines uh, instead of, you know, putting this narrative uh, of us and them, but really trying to share each other's culture with each other through through the tactile experience. I think Absolutely. this is an amazing way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's one of, I mean, that's another thing that I'm like thinking about is like, how can I express that, you know? Um, and, and maybe what I want to do is just start with my own, mm -hmm. like blood, my different, you know, the family tree, like how can I take different parts of my own family's histories and, and teach the world about the techniques and like the beauty of that culture through making different tactile pieces or textile sculptures and and I also mean, yeah, and also, of mine. Mm -hmm. yeah and also being you know being such a mixed breed uh, and, and you know taking all of those cultures and, and creating a mixture of them mm -hmm. like showing that uh, this is not necessarily the cultures are not separate from one another mm -hmm. they can breed they can mix they can interact mm -hmm. this is I think this is an amazing way and you are an amazing uh, example of that Oh, thank you. Well, I, I definitely, I want to touch on that because the more people you meet, the more you realize that's the most of us, you yeah. know? Yeah. And so let's all be honest and make some art dedicated to that and the beauty that we are so mixed, you know, yeah. that we can all work together. So I don't know, I'm idealistic. I have like, you know, visions of peace you know we can do this <laughs> we're gonna make it happen and like I just I want to be part of it I don't know how yet I don't know what it looks like but I definitely love the idea of sharing cultures techniques just like love for each other globally yeah like I definitely I want to be part of that and I definitely yeah. want to get to see that too you know, uh, yeah. no, I definitely see the how how the world would be a better place if we all learned each other's you know ways of making things, right? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And you can learn so much from textiles in itself. Yeah, there's books dedicated to learning history through textiles. You know, um, and that's wouldn't that be interesting? You know yeah. how it recycles, and how like the Silk Road was something that like created the you know cultures and civilizations and such like maybe that's our way that we like heal the world <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's definitely. <to> again <laughs> <laughs> definitely <laughs> oh my goodness oh this is so amazing i'm so glad that we have done this again uh, yeah. uh th the first time was a hiccup but uh, you know, we just got together and did this again <laughs> and i think this conversation is just as amazing if not even more than the first time we tried okay. uh, but yeah <laughs> thank you so much again for your time for doing this the second time with me and um, I'm so happy that you are a part of this podcast thank you so much for being thank in the you. RC. I I'm honored thank you so much and uh I love watching and listening to the different podcasts it's a great community you're building here so Love I it. I like to I like to think so. I like to think so and I I genuinely am amazed with every single person I've been communicating with. It's, right? it's just yes. People are fascinating. Yeah. If you let them like speak their truth. It's like, oh man, I love it's like yeah. I love people watching. Like I love getting into the heads of an artist or a writer or a musician. Like it's just like yeah. fascinates me. And yeah. it's, it's, it's a very enriching experience. I bet it is. Absolutely. So thank <laughs> you, Brie, for enriching my world today. And I hope our listeners too. So very quickly, uh, tell people how to find you online. Sure. And I, um, and I will make sure to put all the links and references and some uh, uh, pictures of your projects for people to see in the show notes. So, but just quickly tell us how to find you. Um, so Instagram, Brie.Angela.Design and, you know, BrieAngela.com is my website, but, um, yeah, just reach out to me 
And I'm always up for collaboration or a new project, or just honestly, I'm trying to find people of like mind that want to create a new experience for children, you know, something that's not been done yet. So, hey, let's collect, you know, collaborate. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. Well, thank you again. And we'll see you next time in the art scene. Okay, thank you. It has been another episode of In the Art Scene podcast. If you liked today's conversation, please give us a good review on Apple and go listen to other great stories. Check out our website intheartscene.com or follow us on Instagram at intheartscene for more content. If you are a creative and you want to share your story, shoot us a message from the website or DM us on Instagram. Look forward to seeing you next time in the art scene.